Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Borderwise, and welcome back to From the Depths and whatever this video is supposed to be. This is a very spur of the moment thing, I do have to say, uh, because goodness knows there's a whole bunch of other stuff I should probably be recording and making videos on instead. But I felt like talking about this. And what is this? Uh, this is a bulwark that I have um, basically swapped out all the turrets of and retrofit um, into a, I suppose, upgraded version. And basically what this video is about is me talking about my experience uh, with retrofitting uh, this uh, beautiful old girl. And basically how retrofitting things in this game is actually really fun. I tend not to do it that often so because um, it can be quite difficult to... Uh, modify an existing craft made by somebody else into something um, well yep yeah, because you basically have to first know the craft inside out and then modify it bit by bit and like you could it's easy to stuff up basically I've just noticed that I've stuffed something up right here as a matter of fact and let's just sort this out I have replaced glass with portholes all over the place. There we go. Improved bulwark. So yeah, I just started doing this on a whim. Um, about when was this? I don't remember when I started. It was about a few days ago because I was having a look at the bulwark. So uh, if you don't know what the bulwark is, it is a godly class um, onyx watch uh, craft, and it is um, like I remember my very f first uh, most wanted episode. I recall, uh, was, you know, it was on the bulwark, simply because back in the day I thought this thing was really scary. And it kind of is, it's covered in big guns, and it's quite an imposing looking thing at the very least, but it has not aged well. Um, the Cram Tetris is kind of dodgy, and um, these are mostly, these turrets have a lot of stuff below, above the surface, they're big, they're easy to hit, uh, the barrels get shot off um, easily. Uh, most of these guns here are deck guns, and um, that look cool, but don't really do much in the way of damage. Like, even though the numbers look kind of cool, this one uh, cannon over here does about 14,000 explosive damage uh, per shell, but just, it, I don't know, it's a cram cannon, which means that it's gonna miss at least half the shots when firing at anything that goes above a certain speed. And um, I remember they've actually shrunk these... Uh, uh, these guns here, uh, these um, these three AA guns used to be quite a bit bigger. And uh, yeah, and so I was having a look at this thing. And I was thinking, you know what, this thing uh, needs some TLC. It needs uh, some love. And so I took it upon myself to have a go at doing that because the Onyx Watch, uh, the rules for this faction are a little bit different than uh, they used to be. And for one thing, they're allowed missiles now. And there's even the odd um, thing that has um, a missile countermeasure, so... Yeah, so the trebuchet, for instance, um, I have noticed, uh, if you have a look at it. And by the way, if you're wondering how I changed my fleet colors to be exactly uh, Onyx Watch um, stuff, it's... Like, you don't realize how big the trebuchet is until you put it next to the bulwark and realize that they're uh, not far off in terms of size. Uh, but anyway, so uh, the trebuchet has, um, it's got uh, missile decoys now. It's also got large uh, missiles just here in the back. It's also got this dude chilling out here. Wow, I can't believe I missed that. But it also has... What on earth is this? Ah, oh, some kind of thing. It's got smoke. But yeah, so uh, the Onyx Watch has all kinds of stuff now. Is that what I think it is? No, it isn't. No, it isn't. I was wondering if... Uh, Nope. Okay, so no torpedo decoys by looks of it. No. Yes, it does have torpedo decoys, actually. Never mind. So, the Onyx Watch is uh, generally a bit scarier uh, than it used to be. Uh, but the Bulwark doesn't really reflect that. And that's kind of what I was going with uh, when retrofitting uh, it. And I have no idea uh, whether I even should uh, submit this to like the devs or like the cottles or mages rather as a replacement for the bulwark because I think there's plenty of things I've done here that don't quite fit in with the onyx watch I don't know like probably someone who's a lot better than me when it comes to aesthetic should definitely have a go over this if they do want it 
But yeah, so firstly, um, the turrets are actually smaller, so particularly over here. Actually, let's get a side-by-side -side comparison, because that's super fun and cool. Get over there, yeah. So, um, the main guns are much smaller, and they're... I think the main thing I was trying to go for uh, with this uh, retrofitted bulwark is that it's called the bulwark, so... A bulwark is like a wall, a fortification, something that is like designed to withstand assault. So my main um, concern was making this thing tankier without making it bigger or making it more expensive, more expensive or heavier, or uh, something like that. So yeah, one of the ways to do that is actually to get smaller, because then you get harder, harder to hit. And you'll notice that uh, you can. Generally, these turrets are just, they well, for one thing, they're not as tall, I think, on this guy, one, two, three, four, five meters tall uh, above the deck, uh, including the crenellations on top of it, and this guy over here, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, so, only slightly taller, but yeah, it's, uh, actually, it's weird, these things look so much bigger just because of their shape. I think this is, yeah, this is considerably less wide, though. And that's an advantage. Like, I remember doing in the turret caps tutorial I did ages ago, I was talking about how generally there's two ways to go with turrets. You can have them big and heavily armored, or you can have them small and hard to hit. And I've, in shrinking these down, I've gone slightly more uh, towards the hard to hit thing. Because these things seem to get blown up slightly less than the old turrets do. And particularly the ones on the side uh, tend to uh, hang out uh, and survive a little bit better. So... These things are actually quite similar. These are, what are these? These are penetration depth guns. They've got a uh, pen depth fuse set to five meters, and uh, they've got an inertial fuse set to 15. I know that because I looked, and um, it's actually kind of a problem with cram cannons these days is that um, they don't get good AP values. I think the devs, um, I think it's an easy oversight to have really, is like uh, when the armor changes um, uh, were introduced um, some time ago, um, I think, uh, kinetic damage was halved across the board, but, um, yeah, like, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, AP values for crams are unchanged, which actually means they kind of suck at penetrating stuff now. You need to get them really big in order to have decent penetration. In fact, I'm not even sure that, um, a bulwark can, a bulwark shell can get through five layers of metal, even though the pen depth fuse is set for that. I'll go, I guess, if you're shooting at something that's not metal, or if it's uh, made up of a lot of damaged beams, that isn't too much of a problem. So yeah, that's a that's a thing. And so these things are kind of half penetrators. These things, um, you can see the damage numbers are kind of similar to these over here. So let's go over here. What's this? Uh, 15,000 KD, 11,000 explosive. And uh, this is about 11,000 KD. And 23, a thousand explosive, but less uh, AP. So this guy's got 27.6 AP, and this is 12 because it's not. I don't really care much about penetrating deep because over penetration is a constant worry uh, with cram cannons like this. So these guys are just designed to punch two meters into something at most, and then really big explosion. Uh, whereas these things, uh, back in the day, they would sink really deep into a target and then go kablooey. Which was really cool and fun. Also, I remember these things used to have time fuses, and I don't think they have that anymore. Which is interesting. Um, and moving on back here, you'll notice this turret is a lot smaller. So, um, I think this on the back here, this um, uh, second to last main turret here, is an entirely a deck gun. So, one more, thank you. So, it's all above deck. Uh, the turret is mounted on this block right here, so if you remove that you'll see that um, it's not sunk into the deck at all. Well, it's sunk about one meter into the deck. And deck guns are generally not a good idea, because um, having a big armored umbrella above your turret well is one thing, uh, but having all your vital bits uh, in the bit that's above deck is um, just making the whole thing more vulnerable to anything uh, coming at it at a flat angle, which uh, there's a lot of things which do that. Uh, APS does that. Uh, missiles do that, particle cannons do that, lasers do that. Even cram cannons these days uh, tend to come in at rather flat angles because um, they've got better velocity than they used to. And if you hear hammering, that is my flatmate uh, building something again. And um, 
What was I talking about? Oh yeah, so over here, uh, this thing is probably nowhere near as, um, doesn't put out nearly as much ducker as um, uh, this thing does, so what have we got there? Oh, we'll need to wait for that to pack. Um, dang it. But yeah, so this is just a single little gun, uh, but it's hidden uh, below the deck a lot more, so... Yeah, that's an uh, important thing to... important distinction. Just uh, one of the ways that this thing survives uh, better than the old bulwark is because, like, it's uh, hiding a lot more stuff below decks, and it's sunk in. And the turrets are actually armored, so... Uh, let's have it do a side-by-side -side, uh, with... Um, actually, no, not with this one. Let's look at the numbers first. So this does... well, AP's not... kinetic damage not worth talking about because it's got lousy AP, so about 20,000 explosive damage. This guy does a bit less, actually, so 11,000 explosive damage, and a much, uh, 25, 20, so slightly better reload speed, uh, less damage overall, 1,500, what is that? That is 1,800. So I think I might have goofed there, and by making that, um, by making this thing just so a little bit too small, like, there's, like, I could potentially make this a bit bigger. Or just, you know, modify uh, this existing turret and just sink uh, some stuff below the deck in order to get it, um, in order to get more jam, more ducker in there. But um, I kind of like this. It's just, um, it's just an extra gun, basically. So yeah, possibly not my best move. But uh, yeah, what else can we talk about? Alright, so let us compare uh, these guns here. Um, with their replacements. So you see there, these are much bigger, and I'm starting to think that... Let's see, is that the other thing? Yes, it is. Wait, no, that's the wrong one. Crud. Over here, you fool. There we go, and if we just hang out over here for a second... Doop. So, this is... The new one, and this is the old one. You see significant difference, and I think actually the uh, old one might be slightly better. Hang on a minute. So that's 65.2, a 225 millimeter gun. Uh, this over here is 70.2 ounce per minute. 128 millimeters. Yeah, I think I goofed there. Uh, they've done something interesting with the Tetris. Uh, here, they've uh, taken far. They've done. Uh, they've uh, done. They've done something. They've stacked the clips uh, far more efficiently than I've done. I've just shot for belt feeders. Although now I think about it, like uh, my my design is somewhat more compact. So yeah, it's interesting. This has got. Um, actually, I haven't changed things an awful lot. Although this has. Let's see. What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? Aha! That's a definite improvement. A much better muzzle velocity. So, basically, it's a better anti-air gun, simply because the shells are faster. And, um, yeah. Like, more stuff hit, like, I always say this, like, n I never leave home without an internally armored turret like this. It makes such a big difference. Because um, these guns on the old bulwark, uh, these secondaries... They pop, like, as soon as you even look at them funny. There's just two layers of metal in between. Um, actually, there's less than that. There's, uh... Yeah, this is, uh... This is less than ideal protection. These things go up extremely easily. Uh, whereas these things survive uh, quite a bit better, simply because of that armored, um... turret down the middle. Down the middle. What do I even say? But yeah, it's, um... They work a fair bit better. Just in terms of survivability, I'm not sure if they actually deal out much more damage. Really didn't do a side-by-side -side comparison before now. Probably should have done that. And um, these things over here are almost entirely for giggles. These are even more anti-air because um, the bulwark was notable to, that it had um, okay uh, AA rather than great AA. And I just decided, you know what, these uh, small crams right here are really cute and all, but... Um, I think we need more AA, and um, we do. These things actually survive quite well, simply because they're small. They, unless they get a direct hit, like right on uh, that small turret, um, 
they tend to survive reasonably well. It's like real deluge of fire needs to come in here uh, before these guys pop. And they're mostly, they are mostly for giggles. This is a meme shell. It is an 18mm flat gun. So, going here, it's mostly gunpowder. Uh, grab compensator, frag, and flak. So, this is the kind of thing that um, if you try and swarm the, uh, this kind of bulwark with a small expendable craft, uh, these things will eat them because uh, it doesn't tend to miss that much. It does absolutely piddly damage against anything else. I might want to swap them out for something bigger, but I really like 18mm uh, belt feeders because they're so fun. So, um, yeah, so if we just um, hide you for a second and do that. And if we turn off Scuttle 15 Secondary Fire and spawn in just, I don't know, a swarm of dusters, because this is hilarious to me. Where is it? And these things could just go brrrt, and it's great. Brrrr. And you just see a little river of bullets. And it's so lovely. The great news is that these things reload really quickly, so, because they're so small. Go here, and you'll see, just reload, 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 and just brrrr. So yeah, is this effective AA? Kind of. Is it really fun to watch? Definitely. But yeah, it's these uh, bigger, it's these bigger ones that really do. Uh... Did I actually set this? Yeah, I did. Anyway, so um, basically, this new model ball work has a lot more AA than the old one does. Um, it's because I think the Audix Watch in general just kind of has bad AA. And a little bit more air never hurt anybody, except planes. And um, these guys over here also, uh, not my best move. These are smoke guns, so these are 200 millimeters. And if you go here, you'll see these are uh, frag, by the way, because I find that uh, they, these were HE heads before, so, but uh, that didn't really do much. Um, at this kind of cost and scale, a thousand explosive damage really isn't much, so I just chose to go with uh, frag instead, I believe. Um, frag is allowed for the Onyx watch, so just set to 130, 130, it's jolly, jolly, jolly good. And yeah, like a uh, trademark, what kind of trademark, uh, rubber mantlets um, that I've stuck on here, simply because like, it's gone to the point where I, it looks weird if I don't, if there isn't some kind of mantlet looking thing in front of that. The cram cannons can look fine without it, although this guy does look a little plain, I do admit. But yeah, these guys have one job, and that's to smoke up targets. Uh, rate of fire isn't great, because that is the problem with armored turrets, is that it does restrict uh, the amount of space uh, you can use for it. But yeah, it's like... Um, uh, nothing short of direct uh, cram hits that takes this out, unlike uh, its equivalent over on the old bulwark. Whereas, like, uh... There we go, come on, don't crash on me. Uh, this guy tends to get disabled pretty easily, because, um... Uh, the turret is all above deck. Uh, which means that if the cap is hit, the whole darn thing falls off. Whereas this guy is nice and small and compact. And it's pretty good. Also note on the turret decorations. Uh, I thought I was doing a decent job, um... With the kind of crenellations on top of these turrets. And then I took a look back on the old bulwark and I realized that I am a noob when it comes to making turrets look interesting. Because look at this, this just looks like a rugged slab of awesome metal. And over here, this looks like kind of um, a turtle wearing a fancy hat. It's like, I mean, it still looks quite onyx watchy. Like, you compare these two, uh, they do... I don't know, they definitely do fit. This is still definitely an Onyx watch a craft. And uh, I did unfortunately have to remove a lot of the crenellations um, along the sides. Because uh, these barrels were clipping on them. Because these things, uh, the barrels are a little bit lower down and that they, than they are on the main turrets here. Um, 
Which I reckon is a decent thing because, um, um, well, just uh, the lower down your turrets are, the more likely things are to uh, whiff over the top of them rather than hitting them in the face. Uh, yeah, so speaking of more turrets things, um, because the Onyx Watch is allowed large missiles now, uh, this thing has large missiles. And they're probably for the purposes of like, um, I think if this, uh, if I ever do, like, um, submit this to be in the campaign, uh, the signal processes will have to be removed. I stuck them on this one because I couldn't resist. Like, there's almost no point having missiles that don't have signal processes unless uh, you're not actually going to be damaging anything with them because, I don't know, countermeasures are so ubiquitous now, it's just, there's no cost to this, really. It's one component. And yeah, so uh, lots of explosive damage, like uh, 44,000 explosive damage, uh, two missiles uh, per uh, turret, and um, not super well defended, do I have to admit. It's like, on the back here, um, the only thing between these ejectors and the cruel outside world are two meter metal slopes, less than ideal. Also, they are poking out a little bit in the back, and I know some people will be uh, kind of annoyed by that, but, you know, that's how the cookie crumbles. And, um, yeah, so the great thing about these guys is that um, uh, the one on the other side uh, can still fire. So, should mention that firing res restrictions and setting them for something like this is a real pain in the, pain in the ass. So there's firing restrictions on the turret, uh, but uh, not on the missile controller. And the missile controller, uh, the accuracy is set to 180. So... On here, and you'll notice that's why there's a one turn on it, which does double as extra fuel. So that's not a, I don't know, that's not a real handicap, even though this is on a turret. It also forces the thing to get on target just a little bit quicker. I think there's also a guidance activation delay. No, there isn't, I lied. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a fun stuff. And, uh, oh yeah, we should talk about active defenses because apparently, since the Onyx Watch uh, appears to be allowed. Uh, radar and sonar uh, decoys, uh, this new bulwark has exactly that. So over here, um, we've got uh, the uh, radar decoys, and uh, they're big, so lots of radar target simulators and two sticky flares just for giggles. Using the new missile transmitter system, um, being transmitted to, where is it? It's in the AI command. Oh yeah, here it is. So, that's the other one. Alright, so missiles within 3,000 meter will fire weapons, and here is the missile controller controlling uh, these guys right here. And then they fire, and it's all really good. And it's actually pretty darn effective. So if we go here, you will see that uh, this new bulwark can... Actually, let's turn off all of that. And uh, where is our friend? Where is our friend? Uh, Hornet's Nest. There we go. Let's go here. Hornet's Nest. Excuse me. No. What are you doing? Oh, I I did that in the wrong order. So ta-da! Flares fire. Whole swarms of stuff gets pulled into space where it belongs. And I should really remember to uh, change that um, that stuff. So it can actually, um, you know, so the lambs doesn't waste power uh, firing at distant targets. You know what? Uh, let's uh, let's do this. Let's do some brut. Wow, the sound cut out for a second there. That's a great thing about flak is that it preemptively blows up missiles. Hammering is fun. So yeah, it's um. It's a good time when you actually stick active defenses on your craft. Wow, we're not doing much damage here. Let's turn on all the guns. Let's see if things go pow pow. Ta da! Disintegrated. Lovely, lovely. So yeah, what else can what else can we mention here? Oh yeah, so there's sonar decoys as well. And, um, similar thing, just a whole bunch of sonar decoys. And there's an extra uh, passive sonar I stuck in here, because I tend to find 
that when the Bulwark uh, presents uh, its side, it presents this passive sonar. Who uses passive sonar like this, by the way? This is such a waste of general purpose processing power. Really, like, this thing can only see in one direction. And not the band, either. Like, really. There's one there. I guess there's something to be said for redundancy, but honestly, like, really. Uh, that, those four can be replaced by one thing here, which is why it's got a redundant one here. Uh, because in testing this bulwark against the old one, because I wanted the new one to be able to beat the old one, um, one torpedo, when this gets blown up, the thing can't spot torpedoes anymore, and that's bad. It means that these things don't fire, and um, that's uh, generally a bad time for everybody. So let me show you where that is now. So once again, AI compartment, and um, over here, torpedoes within 3,000 meters, it uh, fires them, and these things are quite uh, cunning. I have... Um, been mucking around um, quite re recently with um, torpedo decoys, and um, turns out that one of the better uh, places to have them float is just one meter below the water surface, because that way, uh, when torpedoes go after them, uh, they're aimed up, and they try and lead the target, and then um, they pop out of the water and lose, um, and end up gliding. Thank you, Drava. Gliding torpedoes, uh, such a good addition to the game. But yeah, that's a that's a that's a good. It's, uh, I'm rather proud of them. Anyway, so let's go back here, and uh, I think the last thing... Excuse you. I think the last thing I changed... I added more ammo here, because I don't know why there was so much freaking Hearthstone um, things here. Excuse me, what is, what is this? Go here. Thank you, Deacon. Like, what, what is this? What is this nonsense? Anyway, so um, there's more ammo in here, because frankly, these things were right next to each other anyway, and... Really, you don't need to have this much hardstone. Like, just one would have done the trick. But, um, yeah, so it's extra ammo for all the stuff. Have I missed anything? I don't think so. I didn't touch the steam engine, by the way, because I believe the reason that uh, steam engines are uh, so ubiquitous in um, uh, campaign vehicles is because they're easier on the CPU, and so. Uh, when there's a whole mob of uh, faction vehicles coming at you, you want your CPU to survive as well as your fleet. So, yeah, that's handy. Uh, what else? What else is there? Like, um, and shields. I didn't touch the shields. Shields are okay, I guess. Uh, this is a really weird thing in here. Just um, old surge protectors. Possibly because it's snug up against metal. And I did tweak the lambs a little bit. So. Um, let's show you, actually, let's show you the preview, what was on the, uh, the old bulwark. Yeah, I really should have, uh, timed it better. I should have, I should have recorded earlier, when my flatmate wasn't hammering. Boy, is there egg on my face. So, the old bulwark has a bunch of frequency doublers here, and, well, destabilizers, sorry. And, um, those who are in the know, uh, with lambs, they tell me that destabilizers are, well, basically they're very situational. Like, um, you don't want to rely on them, and probably you don't want this many. And, uh, I think the sustained damage per second is about, uh, yeah, 4,000. Damage next shot is 258. And I, instead, have, um, it seems to work a lot better if instead of uh, destabilizers, uh, you just had, like, way more storage. Because then, you know, it just, you know, it has more juice. The damage of the next shot is uh, about 2,000 instead of just 400. It does run out of juice, but um, I think it does make a big difference, especially when you're fighting something that um, uh, is chucking a lot of missiles or cram cannons uh, at you, and it's just you want to pop them early. And just why the... Um, should I do it? Should I do it? Yeah, da 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 da. It's... Uh... You see, I'm not a fan of, like, setting uh, lamb systems to 500 meters range, because... Let's see here, the damage at 500 meters is only 60%, so I think I'm gonna drop this down to... And... Copy it all on vehicle, and I don't know. Later, we'll see if that works. And if it doesn't work, by gum, there will be egg on my face. Egg on my face, I say. So I should probably, um... Uh, show you how these two do against each other, the old versus the new. And how I have hopefully improved things. Basically, the gist of this video, which I sort of said already, is that retrofitting things is really fun. And, um, do recommend. So, just for irony points, one, two, three, four, I'm going to 
spawned this guy in on Onyx Watch Colors. Did I mention how to change the faction uh, colors? Oh yeah, the, the easy way to do that, by the way, is you go Fleet Colors, and there's faction presets, so at any time I can go... Okay, my Fleet Colors are now Deep Water Guard, now they're Twin Guard, now they're Onyx Watch. And, um, yeah, you can save schemes uh, here, so I guess, um... I guess I could um, do uh, something there. Let's go. Ah, no. no. Let's not do that. Save your current fleet guards. Oh, well. Whatever. Okay, so let's go over here and let us spawn in our friend the Bulwark. The old Bulwark. The old Wark, if you will. Sounds like Aardvark, I just realized. We're gonna spawn in the Aardvark and uh, let's have these things blow each other up. I do like it when the Bulwark is spawned in. Um, Steel Striders colors. It looks kind of cool. Not gonna lie. And there you see, colors happened. And uh, major weakness of the Bulwark that I didn't touch is that it only has lambs um, uh, on the uh, on the sides of it. So immediately, well, immediately we've got uh, we've got stuff happening over here. The large missiles uh, tend to make a bit of a mess. And bang, 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 bang. Got bang bang bang, lots of bang bang. And let's see how these lambs do. They do okay. Not brilliantly. Oh, something just went explodey. And this is why armored turrets is a very good idea. What's happening over here? Uh, multiple stuffs is happening. Uh, that's one turret down. Really, really good. Also, I should mention uh, that the, the Bulwark does have... Oh, goodness. It does have uh, large torpedoes. Uh, quite large ones. So let's see if they actually get distracted. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And this is exactly what I was talking about. Uh, they fall out of the water. And it's hilarious. And bang, bang, bang. Lots of bang, 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 bang. Yep, better armored turrets. That's nice. Over here, the old Bulwark is uh, having a bit of a horrible time. Bit of a horrible time. The, the torpedoes, uh, I really... Actually, the old Bulwark's um, large torpedoes are a real game changer, do have to say. And... Now, are we the only... Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Life is still good. What's over there? That's 99%. So this is actually the most severe ass whooping um, of the new versus old that I've ever seen. So yes, like the, this whole thing was prompted by me looking at the Bulwark and saying, you know what? You're not godly. You lying piece of. We are in stable, by the way, which is why we're not seeing things like uh, the javelin or uh, the stronghold in here. But yeah, it's like. Yeah, it's like, uh, I just thought, like, you know what? The Bulwark needs a tune-up. It needs, a uh, it needs some TLC. It needs some tender, loving care. And, um, yeah. I'm not trying to sell this uh, to the devs, by the way. There, there are official channels for submitting, um, you know, faction craft that I've completely forgotten about. And that's why I'm making this video instead. But actually, this video was prompted by people asking me, "Is like, hey, like you're showing off this thing. Tell us about it. And so, yeah, okay. And um, there's all kinds of fun uh, things like that. I believe that I've also, actually, you know what? Um, since uh, since the new Bulwark is um, winning anyway, I'll show you that uh, there's this isn't the first time I've done this. Go here. Uh, where is it? The Bastion Retrofit. Let's go here. Oh yeah, I turned it into a frontsider, which is hilarious. Uh, not very onyx watchy at all. These are not onyx watchy turrets at all. And yeah, so it can be cracking good fun in order to to um, just have a go, just to just have a go at a faction craft and see uh, what you can do with it, like how you can play with it, and you learn things as well. Like, perhaps not so much with the Bulwark, which is quite an old 
an outdated design in many ways. Like, um, but uh, certainly with uh, other things, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good time. It's a good time all around. And like, Deacon's health would barely... Ah, that must have been a torpedo. Back here. How's our Bastion doing? Not well. <laughs> Not well. Uh, actually, no, doing just fine. The paint got scratched a little bit. It's all good. This is not cheating. We were winning anyway, I swear. Wow, lots of stuff. How are you still afloat? Jeez. So, yeah, well, like, what, what else can be said about uh, a new bulwark or something? Oh, yeah, not this is not Doom Crams. These things are technically not Doom Crams uh, that I've mounted on them. Yeah. Also, I admit, I have an addiction to pancake turrets. I just, I really do. I do love how... Yeah, I do love how... Like, you know, this is one of the problems I have um, with um, dedicated broadsiding craft that have guns on both sides of them. Because they're not, like, putting 100% of their firepower at their target um, when they do it. Uh, boy. This is fun. This is fun. And actually, this new bulwark can, um... It can just... It can... It's... Well, it doesn't win against the Steel Strider's Rhea, but it doesn't do that badly, either. And it can take on a trebuchet. So, yeah. I'm reasonably pleased with it. I'm re-pleased with it. Oh, when the turret gets decapitated. Oh, boy. Okay. Missed too much. Mm -hmm. We'll miss you, Bulwark. We will miss you. Assuming you like, I'm personally, I'm not sure the devs would even want to replace uh, the old Bulwark. There's something classic about it. And as was pointed out uh, when I shared a screenshot of my uh, Bulwark retrofit, the turrets do look. Way better than mine. That's why I say, like, um, uh, it's not enough just to make effective craft uh, for uh, for the, the for the campaigns or from the depth. They also have to look interesting and cool. Also, I just, actually, sorry to cut the fight short, but um, I should point out that um, let's go here and walk right here. Go over here, and you don't move. Receiving. So, funny thing about the bulwark is that, um, let's actually go down here. Is there stairs down? I don't think there actually is. But yeah, it has a bar. It's got uh, big barrels of mead. And um, one of the whoopsies that I had in uh, retrofitting this thing is that there's a turret up here. Uh, which, uh, this is actually where the little 18mm uh, miniguns uh, sit on the improved version. Improved. Um, updated version, I guess. And uh, they're messing with the mead. So, of course, um, what do I do? Uh, it's like, it's a tough choice um, going between uh, wood or... Uh, not wood, sorry. I was reading what was on screen. Um, picking between booze or more ducca. I chose ducca, but I made an excuse. Where did... Uh, Designs for Nita. Improved bulwark. So, what I've done instead here is that yes, I've messed with the mead a little bit. Where is it? Here it is. So, it's a considerably smaller bar. There's still mead, but there is a door leading around uh, this turret well. Because health and safety is important. And, um, of course, it is the bar staff entrance. Uh, explosive hazard. Because this is an explosive hazard. Actually, 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 I do want to see what happens if this gets blown up. Absolutely nothing. Wow. This thing... Alright, it's not as much as a hazard as I thought. My goodness! 
We have a really safe bar, people. A super safe bar. That's fascinating and cool. So yeah, that's basically it for this Bulwark retrofit. If you've, ne like, basically this fun, this video was basically me saying retrofitting things is really fun. And if you, oh, like, share in the comments uh, below, like, what you have retrofit. And, um, you know, just your misadventures slash misadventures with that. And if you want me to, I don't know. Uh, mess around with another campaign design uh, let me know I'll be happy to do that it's super fun and um, yeah it's a it's a it's a, it is a swinging good time so that is the end of this uh, kind of random uh, video I swear we'll get back to uh, useful stuff like tutorials and whatnot uh, starting next time pinky swear pinky, you can't see it but I'm pinky swearing with myself um, to represent the pinky swear to you so uh, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see uh, more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps and there's fun perks in it for you. And thank you to all my current supporters. And I will see you next time in From the Depths for more building and blowing up shenanigans. Farewell.